Tiff McClem called my bluff. He literally called me and said, Matt, I saw you on YouTube and Instagram saying we weren't going to raise rates. Well, now I am. I said, yeah, right, Tiff. Anyway, I've been talking about interest rates and what's going on with the real estate market all year long. And to be honest, I've been pretty friggin' accurate on inflation, where, where it's going to go. We're seeing prices come down in commodities. We're seeing prices starting to come down in services. We're seeing jobs kind of staying still, but definitely going towards more job losses. And I've been discussing how this is all going to affect real estate stay investing, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. But I'll be honest, man, I did not expect this latest rate raise. It was kind of pointless, 0.25. It really does nothing. What it is though, is a direct message to the real estate market and specifically the Southern Ontario market. Let's be real. Real estate is still going crazy. I'm a real estate agent. I get all the back end data. I'm also a very active investor and flipper. And I can tell you the market is fucking crazy. Even at these high rates, which now we're kind of at the peak, we think, you know, it's it's most likely they're going to have to lower these rates. And I know Tiff McClam and the Bank of Canada, they're all saying, no, I'm going to stay tough in the blah, blah, blah. Although I was wrong on this latest one. <laughs> the overall message is the Bank of Canada is literally running out of steam. Their hand is pretty much almost played. They can talk tough all they want, but they literally can't raise rates too much more if any more because of the amount of debt that they have. And they have to service that debt in the interest every single month. And these high rates don't help them either. Now with the real estate market being so friggin' crazy hot, for example, I just sold one of our flips a couple of weeks ago. It was a totally pimped out fruitful style flip. And obviously the fruitful style flips go crazy, man. The people go crazy for them. But anyway, when I bought this flip, I thought, you know what? If I sell this property at a $550,000 after repair value, that's what I had in mind when I bought this property. I, I don't know what it was, four or five months ago. I thought, cool, that would be amazing. Anyway, we recently sold it for $590,000 all cash, firm, quick close. I listed it and in three days, we had 72 showings. It was like ballistic, even almost crazier than like COVID times. But like I said, man, I gotta do a little bit of this because people love the fruitful style houses, but still, that's insane. The, the, the housing market is absolutely crazy. And honestly, this little 0.25% raise I think is going to do literally nothing, especially to the first time home buyer uh, prices and down. Now for my area of Kitchener Waterloo, we're talking about like the 600 K, maybe 700 K and under this ain't going to do nothing. That market's still going to be crazy. 800, 900, a million and over might start to tighten a little bit, but I'll be honest. I'm seeing houses sell around my area here for over a million dollars and these houses suck ass. So all that being said, Real estate market is absolutely crazy, but my social media manager sent me this video, so I'm gonna watch it and react to it because we all love a good Pierre roasting Trudeau video. I heard this was a good one. I know all the gist of it, but I'm gonna watch this for the first time with you guys. Make some comments about what I what he's saying, maybe what's going on in the housing market, what I expect. Let's get into it. So Justin. Super serious. <laughs> how do you expect people to pay their bills now? Okay, so like this is a real thing. I'm seeing it all around me with just my, my parents, friends, people asking me questions, our family members all coming up to me asking about mortgage rates. What should I do, Matt? What are you seeing? And I'll be legit. There's like a shit ton of pain out there that I think a lot of people are just kind of overlooking. But if you were on a variable rate or if your fixed rate mortgage was coming up for renewal in the next like six months, nine months, a year from now, okay, a lot of people are losing their goddamn mind because these mortgage payments are getting insane and people are really starting to feel the pinch. So this is why I'm saying for many other reasons, but why Bank of Canada, I feel, is playing their hand. This is this has got to be pretty much it because they're going to roll shit over into like a deadly a financial recession if they keep doing what they do. Now, maybe that is the plan. If you got your tinfoil hat on, maybe that's what they want to do. I don't think that intensely, although I love a good conspiracy, I don't think that is literally the plan. I think the plan is let's be safer, let's raise higher uh, hurt people, I guess, but for a short period of time, because we can always lower quickly if we need to. Not a good economic strategy in my mind, but that's that, That's the way they're looking at it. We'd rather go really high, cause some pain, and then reduce quickly rather than not increasing fast enough and having like a 1980s stagflation type of thing, which nobody wants. Nobody wants a Paul Volcker situation again. So I get why they're doing it. I just think that their hands are literally running out. You remember? You told them that debt had no consequences. That interest that? rates would Remember be low that? for long and people could borrow as much as they wanted. Remember Trudeau saying rates are going to be low. We're not, we're not going to raise them during the COVID pandemic. They're going to stay this low for a long time, <laughs> not even like a year. And there'd be no problem. And now, in a, in a span of a year, interest rates have gone up 
by four and a half percentage points, a 19 times increase in barely a year. Okay, so that alone is something crazy. Like we've never had this in a long time for rates to go up this fast. And then again, for the housing market to be this resilient, especially in these key areas. Now I can't speak to like Alberta, especially like Northern Alberta, out East, Halifax. I don't really know what's going on in that market. I would assume there's gonna be a lot of pain, a lot of prices coming down. I don't know, <laughs> I have to check because let's be real. There's just no jobs out there. There's, there's limited population growth. The population is already small. I don't know what's going on in those markets, but all I can speak to is Toronto and down and shit's crazy. Nothing is changing. Nothing is stopping this rocket ship to the friggin' moon with real estate. Yes, prices have come down a little bit, but they're already on the tick back up. And prices are going up this fast with these rates at this, you know, six, six and a half percent for a lot of people. And people are still paying, overbidding, all these bidding wars. I don't know, dude. I don't know. Enough to take on monster million dollar mortgages in order to afford the inflated homes that they had to buy in formerly affordable communities. Inflated homes because the government are, is dumb. They're not building enough supply. That's the real problem in all of this. Now, Pierre is playing his car. He's a politician. He's, got, he's saying what he's got to do, and he's right. But the reality is we just don't have enough homes, and he knows this as well. He talks about this all the time, which is why you know I like to hear what he says. I support him, definitely. He's kind of the best we got. I don't know. <laughs> he's kind of the best we got. But what he speaks about is just like economic fundamental sense. We need to build more homes. How do we build more homes, Matt? We need permits to go faster and for cheaper. Development charges for builders are insane. Like I've always say on this channel, it's like 20 grand to build a single family house. For the permit, for the DC charges, just to build a single family house is like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. Whereas in the US, you know, for in Florida, for example, where we invest, a building permit takes two to three weeks and a couple hundred dollars and you're on your way. Canada is in the stone age when it comes to building more homes. And this is why we are where we are. There's just too much red tape. Tax, 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 red tape, red tape, red tape. A builder doesn't want to build here, me included. You know, I'm a pretty savvy investor. I'm a carpenter by trade. There's nothing I would love more than to build single family houses in Canada here. I think I would crush it and make a good business. But why the fuck would I do that? Way too risky to build houses here. It takes too long. It's like six to 12 months just to get your permit issued. 15, 20 grand for a permit. What are you talking about? The financing charges just to hold that piece of land for like a year? Like, you got to be kidding me. I'll just go to the US and build houses like this. I'll just go invest there. I'll put my money there. Come on, guys. Economic Fundamentals 101. Now don't know how they're going to make their monthly bills. We already see Canadians experiencing six and 700 percent, uh, sorry, six and 700 dollar monthly increases Crazy. in their mortgage payments. And according to the Bank of Canada, you know what, guys, and this is something that I kind of forget. This is going to sound so shitty, bro. <laughs> but like for being like in the wealthier class um, and hanging out with only wealthy people, like, yeah, like I'm not an idiot. Like I can make I can do the math on on the average income and salary and be like, yeah, these people are, are going to be hard for money. Like how how is everybody staying afloat? But like the more I talk to regular people around me and they're like, Matt, dude, like my mortgage payment went up from, uh, you know, 1500 bucks to 2,400 bucks. And I'm like, yeah, so fucking what? Like a thousand bucks a month, like figure it out, dude. But like, that's terrible because people, most people aren't like us. They're not entrepreneur mindset. Like they just can't make money out of thin air. They have a salary. They have a salary. They go to work for eight hours a day. They can't really make more than that eight hours a day. Like they're not going to ruin their life and work 50 hours. Like they just can't do it. So Canadians are like literally hurting middle class, even upper middle class and under. Like they're really starting to feel the pinch. And I don't know. I don't know where this is all going, but most people expect interest rates to come down. Like that, 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 we all know where this is going and where it's headed. Now, this last little hiccup here is making people think, oh my God, maybe they're not going to lower rates in late fall, January, February of next year. Like they're, like they've been saying, you know, maybe it'll be summer of next year. So I got to hold that just a little longer, but like Nonetheless, rates are definitely coming down. Inflation is definitely coming down. I mean, inflation, what is it in Canada? Like, last time I checked, it was like 4.2, 4.3, 4.4, something like that. Like low fours. Like, dude, we're almost to the target rate of 2%, which is like bullshit anyways. Like we're, we're so close. We're getting there. Now, obviously the gap from four to two is the hardest gap to close. This is where like, you know, it really hits. But still, like we're trending down. We all know where this is going, but people are starting to freak out, dude. Over the next three years, a large share of Canadian households will see their mortgage payments go up by 40%. I want you to think of what that means. If you're, if you're paying class, three a grand lot. a month, you could see your mortgage payment go up by $1,400. That's over $15,000 a year 
That's what I'm saying. Like if people make, if, if the household income is a hundred grand, 15 grand, you know, after tax dollars. Oh my God. So we, we're talking like, you got to make an extra like 20, 25,000 grand just to service this new debt on top of the mortgage payment you're already paying. Like it's madness, dude. For a family that brings home 80 grand after tax, that vaporizes a quarter or in some cases even a third of their entire take-home pay, not for mortgage payments, but just for increases in mortgage on payments. Top of the current. Now, Crazy. we have, after eight years of Justin Trudeau, the most indebted households in the G7. Over $2 trillion of household debt. In oh, other yeah, words, facts, household man. debt Data. is equal to the size of the entire Canadian economy today Madness. think of what this means this is why we're investing in florida dude every one here. percentage point increase in interest rates equals one percent of our gdp a two percentage point increase two percent which is more than the average annual growth of our economy this is what i'm saying this is what i'm saying with tiff mcclam and bank of canada they're raising rates they're being the tough guys we're going to raise rates but like yo you're you're running out of runway dude like we know what's going on with Canada. We know that there's like no money left. You guys are just, you have so much debt, the interest on, like you can't, you can't go any higher. I don't care about your tough talk. You're almost done, bro. We've had a four and a half percent increase in one year. This is on the verge of becoming a crisis. And that is an overused term, but I want you to consider this. The people Crazy. who took out million dollar mortgages in 2021 and 2022 will be up for renewal this after the their five part. years in 2026 and 2027. As these hundreds of billions of dollars of debt. Now, will rates be this high up until 2025, 2027? Okay, almost like 100% not. We know where this is going. The, the, like, I think truly there's only six, maybe 12 months more of these higher rates before inflation is where they want them to be. And inflation, by the way, might not even be actually where they want it to be, but they're going to make it look like it is. Okay, we know the government. They're going to they're gonna change the way they calculate the CPI, which they've already done and they're already doing, to make themselves look better. Whatever, dude. We just need the rates to go lower. So all in all, what does this mean for the housing market? What does it mean for investing in real estate? It means don't stop. Don't ever stop. The one kind of mistake I think that I'll admit to, although we don't know what you don't know, but like last year, we put a pause on the flipping business to see where this was all going, where was the economy going, and then we'll figure it out. So from, for example, from like April 2022 to January 1st, we stopped all marketing. Now, I think in hindsight, like it was, it was the right move. If I had, you know, future wizard skills and could see what was coming, obviously I would never have stopped because the real estate market did take a pause from April to like September and then right back up she went again and now it's just going insane. So I wish we wouldn't have stopped, but all in all, don't ever stop investing in real estate. The more properties you can buy at a great deal in a great area, it's what I always talk about, the fundamentals of investing. You just buy it in a good area, rent it out, renovate it better than everybody else, get a quality tenant, and just friggin' wait. You can't ever time the market. It's all about time in the market. The longer you hold real estate, the more boring your strategy is, you're gonna be just fine. Now, I can pivot and do these things a little more because I've already built up you know, a pretty decent sized amount of wealth. I've had 50 rental properties all in Kitchener-Waterloo. I sold them all off because we're not buying any more long-term real estate in Canada. Now we're buying in Florida and Texas. We're still flipping in Canada because flipping is in and out, it's quick. I can pivot, I can do what I gotta do, I can move, I can not move. So that's the advantage I have just being a more savvy investor. I have a team, I can react quick, I can dump a lot of money into a strategy and pivot quick. But if you're just a boring long-term investor like I, have been for the past 13 years before I started doing what I'm doing now, who cares? Just focus on the long term. Stop getting caught up in the media hype. And in fact, use all of this media scare tactic to your advantage, man. For example, our flipping business, we're using all of this to our advantage. I'm getting the best deals right now that I've ever gone in my entire career right now. And it's because everybody's terrified. It's because everybody doesn't know what's coming next. Recession, job layoffs, what's going to happen. We know real estate is an important commodity, the most important commodity in everybody's life, especially here in Canada. Everybody wants to be a homeowner. The biggest generation, the millennials are all coming up at one time and they all want to buy houses. Okay. Less and less people want to rent in the millennial generation specifically. These people want to buy. And we're all getting 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. We're having kids. Okay. When you start having kids, you're going to want a house and you're going to want to own that house with a backyard, white picket fence, all millennial values we still hold on to. We're not Gen Zs. We still believe in that 
kind of old school family structure thing. And we're seeing that play out. So all in all, what am I thinking with the market? Am I worried? Absolutely not. If you just focus on buying in good areas, good quality real estate, hold it, renovate it really well, put a quality tenant in there, you're gonna be just fine. However, use all of this madness, use all of this confusion to your advantage. Because one thing I do know for sure with my wizard hat is if you don't buy real estate now, I know for a fact by 2030, you're gonna go, fuck, I wish I would have bought in 2023. In 2020 or 2035, you're gonna go, fuck, I wish I would have bought in 2027, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's always happening throughout time. Real estate always increases. It usually always beats the inflation rate. It's one of the best things to put your money in. This is why I focus on real estate full on. I've made the majority of my wealth in real estate and I'm gonna continue doing so. So that's my little reaction to Pierre ripping Trudeau apart. This was a pretty deadly post-conference and we need more of this. Trudeau has been a nice guy for the past eight years as prime minister. Maybe he's made Canada look better on the world stage. I can't argue with that. But we now need common sense back in the office. We need fundamentals. We need spreadsheets. We need numbers. We need data. And Polyev is all about that stuff. And he's a fucking savage on the mic. And he knows how to own Trudeau, which is the best friggin' part. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next video.